Ooh, this. It's very wet. Uh, it's still winter here. So, welcome back to the channel, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. So, today I'm going to run you through what training intentionally means. Now, I do this once a week at least, if not twice a week, for my own wing back position, but it's really important to make sure that you do intentional training on top of the team training that you do. All right, so first things first, a precursor to this whole thing we're gonna talk about today about training intentionally is first knowing if you should specialize, if at all, and when you should specialize. Some of the best players in the world know how to play multiple different positions, such as David Alaba at Bayern Munich, Messi at Barcelona, and most notably for me, Sergio Roberto for Barcelona. He's played right back, he's played attacking mid, he's played defensive mid, he's kind of played all over the place. So players like these these are players that know how to play multiple different positions. They may not be the absolute best in the world at it, unless you're talking about Messi, six-time Ballon d'Or winner, obviously. Players like David Alaba and players like Sergio Roberto are able to play a couple different positions and be very, very successful at them. Personally, I didn't focus on a position until I was at least 14 or 15 years old because I had to play multiple positions during the course of a season at the club back home in Seattle where I grew up. And I wasn't converted into a wing back until I was at least 17 years old. Before then, I played center mid, center back, occasionally goalkeeper when I was really young, and then a little bit of winger and center forward. So I kind of played honestly everywhere but outside back. Played there a few games, but it wasn't until I was 17 at my club team Crossfire where the coach said hey I think you'd be really good in this position why don't you try it out and lo and behold now I'm playing professional there so you always have to be aware that things might change but I want to talk about once you've decided here's where I'm gonna play for the rest of my career or here's where I'm gonna focus on playing or perhaps a coach says here's the best way that I think you're gonna fit into this team this is where we're gonna start training intentionally but especially when you're young, it's really, really important, and I would argue much more important to focus on the fundamentals of your soccer IQ. So that's turning, passing, checking your shoulder, making sure that you have confidence on the ball, dribbling, etc. Pep Guardiola once said that when he looks at players, he said, you can teach most things, but I look for the players who have confidence on the ball. So dribbling, making sure that your confidence passing, all that stuff is much more important when you're young as opposed to trying to be the best striker on your team or the best center back on your team. Make sure you're diverse and know what you want to play. The next thing we're going to talk about is team training. So of course, I would argue that's probably the most important thing because soccer is not an individual sport. It's a team sport, unlike some players who might think so. And team training and game-like situations are obviously very important. So never neglect these situations, scratch matches, scrimmage type situation where you can work on those pieces of your game like turning, passing, just the fundamentals, making sure you have that locked in. It's also a great opportunity for you to test out what you want to do. And so if you find that you really enjoy defending, maybe a defensive position is good for you. If you like to sit up top and be marked by somebody and you have a great time going 1v1 and you're really good at it, maybe attacking position would be better for you. It all depends on what you prefer and what a coach sees in you. The one thing that I always tell players to remember, and as a defender, I know this personally, always, always remember that every player has an important role on the field. Just because you're 11 years old and you're watching this video and you're saying, I'm gonna be the best striker in the United States or I'm gonna be the best striker in Australia, I love that and I hope that you go and do exactly that, but the chances of you becoming the top striker might not be as good as you becoming the top winger or the top right back. It all depends on your skill set. So for me, I may be a decent striker. I may be able to play striker at a pro level, but my skill set is more catered towards outside back because of me being able to use both feet. I can defend 1v1. I have great communication on the field and I can cross and shoot. And so those are things that 
for me were great information to have when I was developing as a player towards the end when I was 16 and 17 and you realize okay I've got to play to my strengths of course everybody wants to score goals but always always remember my position on the field as a wingback is just as important as the guy who scores a hat trick and there's this old saying that I always repeat to myself and I tell young kids who I coach is that when you look at a professional team it's the attacking players that often bring the crowds and bring the oohs and the ahs, but it's the defense that wins the championships. That is perhaps my favorite quote catered towards soccer because I think it's absolutely true. And it also highlights that everybody has importance on the field from the goalkeeper all the way up through the striker. When you decide to play a specific position, it's really important to have a conversation with yourself and watch film and say, okay, what are the fundamental movement parts of this position that I can replicate in an individual session? Obviously, as I said before, match type training. So when you're in games of 11 v 11 and when you're doing training with a team, it's much easier to get those movement patterns naturally in a scratch match or a scrimmage. But when you're on your own, and this is what I want to focus on, especially in this video, is how do you train your specific skill set in an individual session? And I'll throw up some videos right here to show you what I'm talking about. When you're watching film and looking at a piece of gameplay from a professional, maybe it's something on my channel, maybe it's something on somebody else's channel, or you're just watching soccer in general, watch the patterns of play that the position that you're looking at does during a game. So it's always, again, catered towards the game situations because that's what's gonna help you improve as a player and that's what's gonna take you to the highest level you wanna play at. So making sure that you're looking at what are they doing with their head? Are they on their swivel? Are they communicating the whole time? Is it speed? Is it decision-making? Obviously, all those pieces are really important, but there's certain positions that might really, really need a super communicative player or a player that never misses a pass because they need to be the playmaker. So looking for things like that are really, really important. Writing a short list down of, okay, the winger that I watched on Manchester City, this is the things that he did. Or I watched the Seattle Reign and these are the things that Megan Rapino did to successfully score a goal or to successfully move a defender out of position for somebody else on our team. In my own game as a wingback, as an example, I'll go through a crossing series, as you saw in the previous video on Monday, about starting really far back, just inside our attacking half, playing balls on the ground and in the air in behind defense and slowly moving up so I'm getting all the different angles that I might need during a game. These are really, really important because once I get into training or a game type situation, I can rely on those things that I've done repeatedly in my own individual sessions. And again, I'm not going all out in these sessions. I'm barely sweating. But what I am doing is focusing on form and repetition, repetition, repetition. Those are really, really important when doing specific trainings towards the position that you wanna be in. One of my favorite things is seeing players who are on my team or other professional teams training specific for their position. All right, so here are a few basic recommendations for the types of drills you might wanna do for each specific position. Disclaimer, I know absolutely nothing about goalkeepers. So for a center back, focus on distribution. Now, center backs, oftentimes you see in the Premier League and in Spain, those are playmakers and as much as maybe back in the early 2000s or 90s or 80s they were much more big brutes who just hit people center backs are becoming the playmakers allowing much more dynamic movement forward because if the center back can play out so 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 easy to have everybody in front of them playing offensively so things you might want to work on are passing on the ground passing in the air accuracy of passing and timing and the weight of the passing. So those are a few things that you might wanna work on that'll really help your game as a center back. Now talking about outside backs or wing backs, depending on the formation you play, just a defensive wing player is, is what I'm going for here. And dribbling at speed 
up the line and crossing from all different angles. Those are two things that I think are absolutely fundamental to my own game and I think to any outside back that plays all over the world, no matter what system you're playing in. So making sure you're dribbling at game pace so you get that touch forward and you're dribbling maybe through cones or you're doing something like that. Again, check the videos out. It's so important to make sure that you can dribble at a full speed as a wing back, especially if you get the ball in open space and you need to bring your team up. So make sure you tra you're training those. And as I described before, all the different angles of crossing, make sure your technique is really good on those. Next up is a center midfield player. Now, I won't distinguish between an attacking mid or a defensive mid. I'm just gonna say everybody who plays in the center of the park, awareness and decision-making. I cannot stress enough. Those are so important. Okay, so, like so, so, so important. Awareness and decision-making. Now, I've done these drills for my own game because I think they're really important for any player to do. However, a drill like I did several videos ago that I'll throw up right here, is really easy to do and all it takes is maybe somebody on the phone or you can do it in your head and call random colors in your head but passing against a wall and then taking a turn immediately and going to the color of the cone that your friend on the phone called or you called in your head and what this does is it forces you to check your shoulder always and be situationally aware of where the cones are and i can't stress enough as a center midfield player you always 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 have to have your head on a swivel the great chavi once said who played for barcelona if you didn't know that he always said all i'm doing during the game is looking for space where's the space where's the space where's the space and he could not be more correct. As a center midfielder player, you have to know where the space is. Now let's talk about wingers. So a more outside attacking position as opposed to the defensive position. Now wingers, 1v1s, 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 crossing and shooting. So maybe it's going against a pole or a cone or a, a chair, I don't care. Whatever you have to do to get something or another ball maybe, maybe you just set another ball there. Do 1v1s, 1v1s, 1v1s because that'll make your game as a winger much better and it will be so effective in a game type situation. Then work on crossing and shooting. So from different angles, making sure that you know, can you cross on the ground? Can you cut it back? Can you do cutting inside and shooting, make sure you can pick out a corner. Finally, the center forwards. So let's talk about center forwards for a second. Uh, finishing, finishing, finishing. That's all I can say. Basically, if you look at a field and there's the 18 yard box here, the goal is down here. You wanna make sure that inside those 18 yard lines, obviously you wanna be able to do stuff on the outside, but inside those 18 yard lines, you should be able to hit the corner or the side netting every single shot. So whether that's throwing poles, about a yard inside each post and then aiming for that every time that can be super effective but always focus on maybe throw the ball up touchdown finish touchdown finish touchdown finish things that are really fundamental to your game will be so effective when it moves into an 11 v 11 situation all right guys that's it for the video thank you so much for joining me today hope you enjoyed that little analysis on what it is to do position specific training hopefully that was helpful if you have any questions or you want more suggestions on drills feel free to dm me at noah cavanaugh official or comment below make sure you like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video cheers